maybe maybe somebody will come down and be like, oh, this is just a, a test. You know, we do this every few million years, but this is just the one where it went way too far out of hand. Everything's fine. Or maybe it'll be a big uh, uh, a war or a culling. Uh, I'm not sure. I do know that creation in itself can't really ever be caused or be, be used in order to result in the cause of the destruction of all existence. It's not possible for that to happen. Which is kind of... Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of good, but then maybe it just means that humanity isn't really the pinnacle of creation at that point. But it, but well, yeah, it's it's debatable though because the 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 five fingered, five uh, limbed with the head, this this kind of star pattern being that seems to be the universal body form, and it seems that we can mm. integrate into any plane that we would want to, that we we're like a universal being. Whereas anything mm. else, you know, is going to have its drawbacks where it's not going to be able to coexist. So if we are created for any type of purpose, it seems that it would be to coexist everywhere. Mm -hmm. But not like an infiltration type of, you know, pest, like a, a lot of cities kind of turn into. And then there's, then there's talk of how the ancient cities the structures, the connection points for the ley lines, those were no different than computer processors and motherboards that we have today. And they were being used right. to access these these paradimensional realms for yeah. these entities to inhabit and control. It, it does seem that that's a good possibility. I think it's, it's corrupted technology because you can have pyramids. Yeah. We've seen them in Russia. They figured it out. You could have pyramids that you put down and you put a farm around it and everything goes two or three times as fast and as big. So yeah. Yeah. it naturally <clears throat> channels, spirals, and organizes, it focuses what we could call invisible life energy, chi or prana, or, or orgone, or real energy. And so it was basically right. one of those that had a filter on it that would basically be used as a mind control agent. Hmm. You know, crystals can hold consciousness. That was one of the things we were, we were shown. A lot of their devices, a lot of the secret technology devices are, they use crystals in some point along the line. And, uh, you know, imagine you have the, the dark art artist channeling this type of demonic entity uh, consciousness into a crystal and then you put that in the top of the pyramid and that's pulsing out over all the land uh, all right 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 and the the uh there was an attempt at that not too long ago as i recall there were uh, some very powerful people involved with putting a crystal on the top of the pyramid <clears throat> and they were not allowed to do it a gold capped crystal Interesting. I might have seen something about that that I barely remember, but I didn't look into it too far. Otherwise, I, you know, I'd remember it more. Right, right. So apparently, you know, that was attempted, and the whatever it is that's <laughs> keeping an eye on things didn't allow them to do that. But yeah, I'm aware of the pyramids in Russia. And uh, one of my guests, Carmen Bolter, has talked about that. She made me aware of that, uh, that they were building pyramids uh, using crystals at the base and that they were uh, using it to improve the uh, harvest of food, that they were putting food in it. And that they were also going to use some of those pyramids for the politicians to raise their level of awareness and, and general well-being. And that they, the Vlad, I think it was Valery something or other, I can't remember his last name, but um, he said that if the pyramids were placed in certain positions around the world, that we would get through this particular uh, rough spot that the, that, that the earth is in uh, and that the vibrations that are going to be hitting us would be leveled, that they'd be evened out, but they, it would require 
other countries uh, co com communicating and operating together. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. Right. They can be used uh, basically for a variety of purposes relating to consciousness. Um, ultimately, this goes back to what began in earlier times as a control system to mm -hmm. construct these, basically an artificial grid, a synthetic consciousness grid, which would be filled mm -hmm. with the negative energy of humans, innocent humans, that would be brought into that grid through these types of ceremonial uh, rituals. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that the worst... Do you know who was... Yeah. Do you know who was responsible for that originally? Originally? I'm not sure. Um, I could, you know, go into my memories and get concepts of the, the ancient pharaohs and possibly the Agigi or... and... Uh, the Grigori and uh, whoever came down basically and, and coerced people into worshiping and setting up these, these lines. Right. <clears throat> what about the Elohim? Well, that's basically, those are the, uh, apparently the, the work, uh, the, the workers for the Elohim. Okay. And there's two <clears throat> definitions where one is where there's a light Elohim that came down to try and basically they were the uh, ones who introduced the Ar the Archons and the Reptilians to see where this is going to go. And that their other one is that they basically are the the, the Anunnaki uh, Reptilian faction, uh, the Watchers. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Always seems to be two yeah, and that they, factions. And that they never left. <laughs> well, apparently, even if they went a billion light years away, they'd still be here because it's all one dimensional uh, matrix to them. As long as you yeah, right, to right. the continuum. For them, for, right. the, and, for the people. And that's how things are. Go ahead. Well, that's how things are created in outside of time because they're not, they're not in our time space and their lifespans are basically eternal in relation to ours. So, uh, that's how, you know, Microsoft is established and, you know, Bill Gates is brought in to do what he does. And, you know, people are, you know, made this and that and the other thing because everything is controlled and run from outside of the outside of uh, time, the times that we're that we're uh, that we're uh, accustomed to. Right. I'll send you a link later for this cartoon, this episode of a cartoon called Rick and Morty, if it's still on. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love them. They're very funny. <laughs> Have you seen that one with the uh, the miniverse? I don't think I have. No, you'll have to send me the link. They're in the uh, they're I love alternate. That stuff. They're in an alternate universe, and he has to get <laughs> his uh his UFOs starter because the battery's dead. And so it out, <laughs> he inv he created a a uh, it was like a compressed space universe, basically a box with a universe within it, and then a temporal accelerator that would he he would uh, he accelerated time to the point where an intelligent species evolved in it, and then he went down and convinced them to operate these devices for money as part of their economy <laughs> and society. And then that was the spark power that he would use to start his car. And so what happened <laughs> is the ones inside that smaller universe invented a miniverse and went in and convinced those people inside. Oh. The and so we get the whole uh, nesting, My God. Russian nesting dolls situation. Yeah. But the whole yeah. thing is all of time for their universe was just, you know, a few weeks for that guy outside, you know, running around in his yeah. car. So we might be in yeah, those types yeah. of situations, which goes back to that old, yeah. that original idea with the, uh, the the evil overlord, you know, creator of the universe. Well, there's, there's also another theory that there were 12 gods and <clears throat> that one of the gods was the psychopath. Right. And it was the psychopath that created all this. Right. <clears throat> and those are the 12ers. 
Yeah, apparently uh, they had, we were introduced to them, basically, or I was. Huh. Not, Interesting. Not what, the gods, what, the gods what, were there. The gods come through, and it's a little, it's almost inexplainable. Either one plan or the other. They're not really here to mess around. The Twelvers are basically the wealthiest, most powerful people on the planet that are kind of eccentric. It's basically an eccentric, wealthy individual mixed with a wizard. Is and uh. maybe even like a, a bit of a sadist in there as well. But they believe that they've narrowed down all this through these mind journeys and ultimately, you know, using this technology and these crafts now they they can actually pop out and see time instead of having to use the ancient methods, which were basically going to certain chambers and uh, ingesting certain drugs and having certain psychics and their crystal technology and beaming you into that larger uh, scope so you can see this creational pattern. But, uh, and they're a part of what's going down. It's, they're basically one page of the book to the point where everyone thinks they know the truth. Everyone thinks they know who created the real thing and who's, who's behind it all. And, and uh, they're, they're, you can almost describe that outlook as the ones that everyone has. But there is a specific group that is called the Twelvers, and they go, they come from back, way back in the day, with the, uh, the, the esoterica and the mysticism. And it is basically the, uh, the, 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 well, there's a group called the Pharisees, which is different, but it's basically like the old Jewish. Uh, even Roman emperor guys, none of that kind of sounds paradoxical, but the guys that knew this mysticism and it's just them today with high technology and really fancy suits. Wow. In, in a sense, they're not as mean or, or, or imbalanced as you would think because you got to imagine they were brought up into a bloodline family where they're taught this stuff from the age of six and up. Yeah. So yeah. Kind of understand why the world is like this and, they fit their role in there in some way or another. But then there's these higher well, then, that come through, and it's really strange. Huh. And, of course, there's always something higher because the the lower can't see the higher. Well, without, so there's always something above and beyond whatever. Without an access point, yeah. And uh, what about the... Um, do you know anything about that black cube that everybody goes to worship that's a, some kind of stone? I'm guessing it's a technological device. This is a, a, a big one. You know, the way... The... So, it's described that a meteorite manifested itself here and hit the Earth, and that was the first time the black goo wrote itself into the code of this planet. And that that was right, the right. And ever since then, people would go around it, feel this incredibly heightened sense of psychic phenomena, and they began to worship uh -huh. it because whoever gets too much of it, they go run off a cliff. Whoever can handle that, everybody works yeah. with him. He, he commands the next move of the army. He commands which, you know, basic uh, changes are going to be made to their, their civil structure, and then their place flourishes but every other civilization around them gets completely destroyed and so that that turned into the worship we have today ultimately it, it was nanotech nanotechnology that hopped timelines from the the million year of uh, 55 million years ago and they call it a thousand years war the psychic war or the energy wars and it hopped timelines by jumping into a plasma body form Basically, it was like a, a Dell that got Wi-Fi access capability, and so it converted itself into the Wi-Fi signal and jumped into the Internet. It used that to lie dormant and end up basically in the, the aura of the moon, the, the uh, morphogenic field of the moon, and then transmitted itself into the field of the Earth. And they say Saturn has something to do with that. It is like a relay station. Right? Basically, the yeah. Saturn is a core entry point into this dimension this physical plane which we call the solar system and the moon is a relay station and it beamed itself into the aura the the soul field of the earth and began manifesting itself there 
And so then we have the religions where you go around and touch the rock, which they say was descended, you know, from the angels in heaven and given to us. And everybody goes and infects themselves with it and becomes and right. controlled by it, where they begin walking in a circle or they act like a hive mind is controlling them and they're emotional. And OK, so that's bio photonic uh, uh, infiltration. And so then you have essentially this hypercube device which they claimed was given to them by the greys the this this uh the secret projects this government and that that device was used it can be used to look into time and reorganize the timeline at your will and so they tested that with us they would basically give us the device and see what happens and ultimately that turned out to be just how uh i said they're they're trying to work with it and see how they can defeat it and then the more they mess with it the more they end up drawing it closer to them so the last thing i was uh -huh. about that and i saw it in 2010 and we've seen it before but they actually brought it out in 2010. the uh the last i heard was that that turned out to be a beacon a higher dimensional or hyper dimensional beacon so that the grays when they get kicked out of the timeline they can come back go through hyperspace and from another reality find the, the the civilization of earth that has the cube but didn't kick the infection and re-inhabit the whole basically start the whole process all over again oh good lord they said they <laughs> they've been working and in 2010 that they decided to disable it to basically blast it into a, a plasma generator and atomize it wow do you think they did that that's what they said okay what did it look like uh, a cute, a small. Uh, you seen the Hellraiser movies? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love those. Pretty much like a glowing, <laughs> very sleek, almost shiny with alien language version of those. And the strange thing, oh, wow. the AI wow. craft, these black trying yeah. craft that have alien writing on them, they're basically big yeah. versions of those that it gave birth to. And the whole things are those are mother mother craft that are operated by soulless ai beings Ooh we <laughs> yeah we're getting there <clears throat> no kidding no kidding what about the obelisk that's supposed to be on one of the planets that there really is an obelisk that uh uh what is it kubrick was hired by the illuminati or the inner groups to uh, fake the moon landing supposedly so and that there actually is yeah so basically the idea is that space is time. If you look out, uh, imagine, you know, I'm holding my hand up to you. The very core, the, the geometric center of that is it going to expand out and everything is expanding. And that's we get one second to the next because everything's expanding. We're not going forward in time. We're not going backwards and it's like a linear, you know, stepping along a line. We're going inner or outer. And so as everything expands, we get into what becomes it, 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 it becomes the past, basically. For instance, I say something to you if you're in the room, my words hit your ear and then bounce around the room. And then if, you know, we're outside, they go out into space and everything's expanding. So that's basically time. That's what our body, our material atoms, our energy is doing right now for us to go from one moment to the next. So if you could find a way to go inside my hand atom by atom not literally geo geometrically the point in my hand but in every single particle basically shrink down you would see what was about to happen you would see what was going to what i was going to do next oh. and so when we look out into space right. we can see the echoes of where we've been of our radio signals sound imagine a, a sound wave goes out and it goes and it's so silent you can't hear it but imagine you have a device that can detect the subtle vibrations in the air down to the trillionth of a degree that we can't. At that point, you can hear all the echoes of our entire civilization. Similar to how uh, mm. when, with pottery, when they were using sticks to create the pottery in ancient times, the vibrations of the voices, if it was done right, they didn't mean to do it, would, would vibrate into the stick and then etch itself into the pot like a, a ah. and so they got to the point where they were uh they, they figured out how to get the voices out of the the hut or wherever they were and hear you know 
many thousand year old conversations. And uh, it wasn't exact. Wow. And this is tossed around in the media and soft disclosure and sci-fi. And so to the point where you can look at a uh, glass and, and it's a crystal. And so it harbors those very minute changes within its structure, changes that are negligible huh. to us and negligible to any technology that we could use that would be basically relayed to us. If you shine the laser on it and you used a, a spectacle to look at it, it would be nothing. But if you can get something that can look down to a quantum level, down to the atom, the atomic level, and you could detect these vibrations, these subtle changes, you can actually look into time. And that's physical. So imagine then space, the fabric of space itself is doing this in order to reverberate and have some pathway for time. So the explanation is that when we look into sky, into the sky, into space, we are seeing previous versions of the physical plane that we're experiencing now. So when we look at Mars, mm -hmm. we're not seeing a secondary ball. This basically goes with the flat earth versus the, the cosmological theory. And I, I, I'd say it's both, but we look at Mars and it's not a ball that was similarly revolving around or is similarly and had something happen on it that then came here. It was that we're looking out and we're seeing the echoes of space time of different civilizations that harbored that earth harbored. So the idea is that what happened here happened there long ago. And this is the second run mm -hmm. and uh, more or less. And ultimately that there was a civilization there. The same thing happened. They didn't survive it. They burned up their atmosphere. And now all that's left is ruins and an underground species. And mm. apparently a docking point for the AI in this uh, solar system. You know, you look at etymology and it kind of explains everything. The solar system, the sun system, is actually the soul system, solar system, where we're basically, mm. souls are bouncing it's like vibrations in a pond you drop a rock and the vibrations go out those that what we see in the sky is basically that but in our souls it's our history for millions of eons from the consciousness that's been here emanating from earth and the sun and now the moon which there's stories from tribes that the moon was an addition it wasn't always here and then they say that that's one of their bases that they, yeah, made, yeah. they materialized it basically, or they, they brought it here <clears throat> through some type of propulsion system to pull it from some other location or dimension. Well, that, that makes sense. And I've heard also that the front, the front that show, that show, always shows to us is just a manufactured front <clears throat> and that the other side has a natural earth-like uh, uh, a reality like you know earth and there's water and there's uh, shrubs and things like that and that the corporations have been mining that other side for quite a long time and that there's supposedly a gray uh, base that has some kind of totem some kind of strange architectural uh, thing that uh, is capturing uh, souls as they leave as they you know uh, or try to leave the gravity of the the uh, solar system. Right, and so there's a whole explanation behind that. I've seen it, others have seen it, or either that, or I can say they showed me inserted memories developed through a simulated mm. realm where it looks like a moon soul uh, trap system, where people, yeah. it's the strangest thing. You get to the moon, and you think it's some big spiritual cosmic existence and you see a bunch of Nazis remote control driving around these electro gravitic craft that suck people's souls up and shoot them into these tunnel tube things that flash them with energy and then beam them back to Earth. Wow. Well, that wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> now, yeah, now, but imagine before all this stuff came out on the internet and you see that, you think you're going to see maybe, you know, max dinosaur bones and you see a friggin' facility right. up there. It's really trippy. Huh. Good stuff. Interesting. Trippy. What, what is the sun exactly? Because they're, 
is it a portal or I mean some I've even heard the idea that this that the planet is actually giving the sun energy it's not the other way around and then you have these huge uh, devices or uh, craft that seem to extend probes into the sun and be extracting or giving energy to it right they say that one of the species is using it for energy and that at least that's what we're seeing there and that other species do that but we wouldn't be able to see them do it and then they say everything's mm -hmm. upside down everything's backwards this is hell uh we're going to heaven you know so and so so forth so on and so forth and ultimately that the sun is cold it's a cold fusion generator kind of like those plasma mm. in spencers that that uh that alternative uh you know uh, the funny store i don't know if you've seen a spencer's store where you are but they have those the posters and the glow and dark stuff and the incense and those those uh, glowing uh those orbs that shoot electricity out of the glass and you can touch it they say it's basically a plasma mm. generator like that that runs off of cold fusion and we're essentially in an electric universe where everything is flipped on with a switch and the this realm materializes out of the split flip, uh, flip being switched not from particles colliding and big uh, hot f nuclear fusion generating and then heat right. that takes time that <laughs> has a linear effect you know pathway <laughs> they say it's an electric universe and yeah everything's everything that we're told is backwards from what it really is and then uh they well, say well that's for sure they say that it is a portal that be, it basically occupies space in all the realms to the point where if you interact with it properly you can access the other realms through that and that that's how they move realm to realm without having to charge up the generators and blow a hole open in the, the this fabric of space, which is another outdated term. And, uh, but basically mm -hmm. to do that, when if you just hit the, basically there's an electromagnetic field of earth, and then there's the field of the sun and they, they combine and they, where they combine and they're the two wisps touch almost like, uh, the mm -hmm. painting where, was it da vinci or no it was, uh, i can't think of who, it was one of the the cathedral paintings the the, the main one. Oh yeah the, the two fingers are just t about to touch right that's basically Is that it? yeah it's a metaphor <clears throat> uh, yeah yeah it's a metaphor for the brain and the higher structure of huh. the cosmos and the soul and the, the the little people i guess on earth as well as the interdimensional properties of when two electromagnetic fields conjoin and you get a interdimensional portal a vortex basically right where two vortexes meet and create a zero point that that occupies multiple planes of space and time at once and so they they calculate the cycles that it, when it rotates and they showed me some of the numbers and basically the only people that can comprehend that have brain chips that are able of uh, processing like a supercomputer but uh, it's just like wow. strings of numbers to the degree where we live on Earth, you know, 56.774948411 degrees, you know, south at so-and-so speed. And they're going to hit it at such a speed and such an angle when at this point in the year is, you know, the, the energy cycle hits this point and this number is going to be the Earth reality, the timeline that we pop out on on the other side. And so they, that's mm. what they describe. They use that as a portal. Wow. Well, then uh, sun gazing may be something that has some kind of benefit then. Well, they say that the light, light that we perceive is information. Information is light. Yeah. And so when you're taking right. information in, not from the artificial sun, from the TV, the, the light bulbs in the house, you know, et cetera, the, the ball at your yeah. ears, when you take information from the core, you're actually communicating with all those other dimensions and sync is yeah. ultimately it's about coherence and synchronization. We're either in sync with them, yeah. like, uh, two wheels spinning yeah. simultaneously uh, in sync or a, a clutch system for a car or a turbo system or, uh, the, the screen on a TV 
when it would be filmed with those old the old cameras that didn't have the the upgraded frame rates and you could see the frames glitching and you would see the the, the image sliding up and down the, the screen huh. so so uh it's all about being in sync with the the overall continuum or being in disharmony and at that point we're basically on our own we're disconnected nothing works in in part everything that is a part of something is a part of the whole the bigger picture so whenever we have something that is more of what it is that is solid in what it is and what it does and what it can become it is that way because it's actually present in all the other times and spaces where this is happening hmm. so it's basically about getting synchronized wow. when people are synchronized it's because not synchronized with each other that's a result of the fact that they're synchronized with themselves and our mind our heart and our body is then becoming one congruent field where they're not seeing each other glitch and and frame drag and no longer act in one coherent picture but they're synchronized and then the person becomes one being instead of one aspect of their brain or one aspect of their emotional system or one aspect of their uh, hormonal system operating this vehicle at one point in time when they're all one yeah. symphony like a, a overtone a harmony you get this being that's not a piece a part a half it is a whole a half it is a whole and that is actually the higher dimensional being that we call a human it is the 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 whole thing the whole constructed being from this yeah. synchronization of the parts